Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and welcome to part 13 of Miraculous Bonds Beyond Fate, my Miraculous Ladybug AU with a different origin story and different other things too. If this video is your first exposure to Bonds Beyond Fate, then please check out the story from the beginning. Return for part 13 when you are ready. For everyone else, sit back, relax, hit that like button for the algorithm, subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites, put the tiger emoji in the comments, and enjoy Miraculous Bonds Beyond Fate Part 13. What did I say about kicking my door like a mad lady? Immediately after Marinette kicked open Alia's door, Alia, with an annoyed expression, walked over to her friend and began to painlessly pinch and pull the girl's cheeks to stretch out her face. And now she was lecturing her. Um, don't do it? Marinette replied with an altered tone, considering her cheeks were being pulled. And what did you do? I did it. Now what do you say? I'm sorry. Nino and Adrian simply watched on at the scene. Nino was mostly amused while Adrian had previously attempted to get up to appease Alia when she strolled over to Mari, but Nino wordlessly gestured for him to chill out. Once Alia had let go, Marinette, in order to atone for her actions, left the room, closing the door behind her. She then opened the door calmly. Alia nodded in approval. That's better. Mari sighed, followed by her and Alia giggling to each other. Now spill the tea, Alia said. Marinette closed her eyes and took a deep breath. <sighs> so I was at the boulangerie helping my parents, you know, same old, same old, but then this boy walks in. He's so sweet and super cool. I said something kind of stupid and made us both laugh, and then we started talking. Turns out he's from Japan, and I was like, whoa, could he be the one Master Fu called? And while I was trying to figure that out, he was like, whoa, I've seen you before. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah. He then showed me our class photo from last year, and I thought that was super creepy, until he revealed that his sister Julika was in our class, and I felt so bad because I had no idea she existed. And now she's in Switzerland because she wasn't making any friends, and now she's still not making friends, so we have to cheer her up somehow. Once she was done explaining, she caught her breath. Her friends all stared at her in silence, attempting to process everything that was just said. Wait, so you met someone from Japan? Adrian asked. Right on, Nino pumped his fist. I had no idea we'd meet our guy so quickly. Slow your roll, you two, Alia told them. How old was this boy who walked in? He's Julika's older brother, but looks around our age, so maybe a year or two older? Alia shook her head and shrugged. That's a no-go then. No way the contact in Japan would send another teen. It just wouldn't make sense. From what I've learned, it takes years of training to even be allowed to wield a Miraculous. 17 or 18 at the earliest, but not usually into maybe the mid-20s. Considering the severity of the situation, it would be irresponsible to send another teenager. And I don't know about you guys, but personally, I don't want another teenager. I want someone who's been training for years, who knows what they're doing, and who can help us the most effectively so that we don't die. She addressed Mari and Adrian. You two are only holders because of an accident, and I'm one because I'm awesome. The others gave her an exasperated look. She cleared her throat. Ahem. <laughs> I mean, because I'm Ladybug's best friend. We all know none of us were Fu's first choice for a reason, is all I'm saying. It's not impossible, though. Adrian reasoned. This guy, or whoever, could be an exception. I suppose that's true, but still, we can't run around making wild guesses. We'd go crazy. After all, do you know how many Japanese tourists we have a year? I thought about that, Mari responded, but Luca isn't a tourist. His family lives here. Well, some of them do, and that's what I wanted. See, he would have come anyway if his family already lives here. It's just a coincidence, Alia commented. Plus, it's not like she saw a miraculous on him or anything, Nino added. Even if she did, she wouldn't recognize it, Plag said. How come? Nino asked. All miraculous have a cloaking charm on them. When not being used and while being worn by their holder, they change their appearance as to not be easily detected, Tiki explained. The charm isn't all that necessary in miraculous communities, but in situations like with Hawk Moth, it very much is, Trick said. Imagine the hot water you'd all be in if your Miraculous were obvious. You'd probably be dead by now, 
Plague thoughtlessly added. Marinette, Adrian, and Alia all had a grim and horrified expression. Tiki shot the black cat Kwame a look. Plague? What? It's true. I'm saying the charm is a good thing. Anyway, Alia tried to change the subject as she addressed Marinette. You didn't get all extra with this boy trying to find a miraculous, did you? Extra? I don't get extra. Marinette sounded offended. Uh, dudette, you forgot to buy something from a store one time and felt so awkward about seeing the same cashier that you bought a glasses, nose, and mustache disguise from the party store next door just to pretend you were someone else, Nino told her with a bit of a chuckle. Marinette blushed as she grimaced. Her eyes quickly darted over to Adrian, who was also giggling. Wait, she actually did that? The blonde boy asked. Totally, I think I have a picture of it. No, he doesn't want to see that, Mari frantically told him. I don't know, I think I kind of do. Adrian flashed her a flirty smile. She gave him a light karate chop to his head. No, you don't. And there was that other time when a baby duck was 10 yards away from its mother and couldn't find her, and instead of picking it up, you got three colors of chalk to draw a line to its mother and used your flashlight to try to guide it, Alia relayed. Adrian puffed his cheeks to hold back his laughter. Face completely red, Mari exclaimed, My method was perfectly valid. Besides, you can't touch the babies of wild animals or else their mother can't recognize them anymore because of their scent. Wasn't that disproven? Alia asked. I thought that was only with deer, Nino added. We're getting off topic here, Marinette shouted, completely embarrassed. I came here because we need to help Julica. Julica? Yeah, Luca's sister. She was in our class last year. I know it might be hard to remember. I remember Julica, Alia said. She was the quiet girl with the cool dark clothes and pink hair, right? Mari blinked in surprise. You... you know her? Not personally, but I know of her. We don't have that many kids in our school, so I make a point of being aware of everyone in our grade, especially the interesting ones. And she was interesting. Her looks alone already put her on my radar, but with how she always kept to herself, it was like she was hiding something. Kind of a cool vibe, honestly. Mari turned to Nino. Do you remember her? Uh, maybe? I do sort of remember someone with pink hair. I can honestly say I didn't know her name. But now that I think about it, I feel like I said something to her once. I think she forgot to plug in her earbuds one time and some of the music on her phone started playing. It was a super obscure song from a super obscure but awesome band that I didn't think anyone knew about. So I complimented her taste. She didn't really respond to that. Marinette frowned. I think she was just being shy. Luca did say that she had a problem connecting with others. Why didn't you try to talk to her, Alia? I didn't know that she didn't have any friends. I thought she had her own thing going on. I honestly probably figured that she was too cool to not have friends. We just never had a chance to get to know each other, you know? Mari groaned. At least you two sort of remember her. I saw her picture and didn't even know she was in the same class as me for an entire year. It was like looking at someone for the first time. I feel just awful. Adrian got up and walked over to her, placing a hand on her shoulder. It's okay, Marinette. We all know you're a great person and would never purposefully leave anyone out. I don't think any of you would. Don't beat yourself up over it. But it still sucks, you know? She moved all the way to Switzerland because we didn't befriend her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. Girl, you're giving us way too much credit here. We're not the only ones who didn't approach her. There were other friend opportunities in our grade, Alia told her. And then she thought about it. Except Chloe. Adrian glared at her. Alia rolled her eyes. Still, I plan on making this right, Marinette declared. How? Nino asked. I have a plan, she triumphantly said. Oh boy. Alia, exasperated yet amused, sat down. This ought to be good. Okay, so Luca said that Julica enjoyed my papa's baked goods, so I figured we'd trick my parents and get them out of the bakery for an afternoon. 
Maybe we can pretend that we're in charge of a big sweepstakes company and give them a call, saying they earned a free lunch somewhere. We could pay off the owners of said restaurant to play along and give them this lunch. While they're gone, you guys help me bake the goods. And then we hide the baked goods. When my papa asks where the ingredients are, we say we're borrowing them for a science project. After that, I secure passage to Switzerland, either via train or plane. Might have to sneak on board. You three have to camp out at a rooftop near my house so that when my parents come back to check on me, Rena Rouge can use an illusion to pretend that I'm there. And if need be, Cat Noir or Adrian or Nino can distract them until I get back. I'll drop the package off to Julika and then I'll sneak back into Paris. What do you think? Marinette's eyes were basically shining from excitement. Uh... Nino tried to think of an appropriate answer. Adrian looked away. His body was shaking from trying to hold back laughter. Alia sighed and shook her head and gestured to Mari in front of the boys. See what I mean? Super extra. Marinette blinked in confusion. What? That was a lovely plan, Marinette, Tiki encouraged. I'm sure that could technically work. Does anyone else's brain feel like it's on fire? Plague dryly asked. What do you mean by that? Mari asked him, slightly agitated. Alia got up and wrapped an arm around her bestie's shoulder. I've got you, girl. I can see your general vision, and it isn't terrible. It's actually quite creative. But let's brainstorm this to make our lives a bit easier. Ladies and gentlemen, time to plan Operation Cheer Up Julica. And so the group put their heads together for the next 30 minutes to an hour thinking of an effective plan. Here's what they came up with. Step one. On the upcoming Friday evening, Marinette would go up to her father and nicely ask him for a dozen of his best pastries. Um, Papa, would you do a favor for me? Sure, sweetie. She had her father Tom's full attention. My friends and I are going to hang out at the amusement park tomorrow, and Adrian has never tried your creations before. Can you believe that? <laughs> Never ever. Oh, and how is he doing, dear? Her mother Sabine asked as she walked in. It must be so hard being without his parents. Mari chuckled nervously while also feeling bad. Y yeah, but his spirits are high, so that's good. We want to cheer him up by taking him somewhere super fun. Yup, super fun. Marinette, honey. Are you all right? You're looking a bit tense, her dad asked, concerned. She forced a grin. Yep, couldn't be better. Just super duper excited about going to the amusement park with my friends and nowhere else. <laughs> I mean, what do you think I'd do? Go to a different country or something? Ha! <laughs> that would be so silly. You're so silly, Papa. Her parents continued to stare at her. Back while discussing the plan, Nino asked, Is it Marinette, like, super bad at lying? Maybe you should be there with her, Alia. Mari couldn't even make a retort because she knew he was right. Nah, she's got this. Plus, her folks are super cool, you know that. But they wouldn't just let her leave the country, Adrian asked. Would your parents? Alia asked before immediately regretting it and feeling awful. She avoided eye contact with him. Knowing she meant well, Adrian smiled at her. You don't have to tiptoe around me like that, Alia. It doesn't quite seem to be in your personality anyway. I like that you're usually so straightforward. You know, except when you're badmouthing Chloe. She shot him a cheeky grin. Yeah, that's probably not gonna stop, but thanks for the green light, Agrest. Still, you're my friend, so I don't want to say out-of-pocket things like that. No worries at all. And to answer your question, my mom probably wouldn't have let me go without adult supervision. It is a pretty big trip, after all. I don't think she would have said no, just would have wanted me taken care of. And my dad? Um... He smiled sadly. He'd be too busy to hear me out. I'd probably be able to go and come back without him noticing. Marinette gave him a sympathetic look. She didn't quite know how to respond to his answer. So, Alia took the lead. 
Well, I think most of our parents are like your mom, but who knows when an adult would actually have the time to take us to Switzerland. I'm sorry, I'm technically asking you all to be sneaky, Marinette randomly said. Nino smiled at her. You're superheroes who have to keep your identities a secret. Being sneaky is part of the game. With saving the day stuff, sure, but this is a bakery delivery, she said. Not just a bakery delivery, it's a friendship delivery, right? And we're not about to diss friendship, Alia winked at her. I just really don't want you all to get in trouble because of my idea. You're not making us do this, Marinette. We want to help you, Adrian said. He gave her a bright smile that made her heart unexpectedly jump. I just super appreciate that you're including us in your plans. Thanks for trusting us. Upon seeing her friends being so supportive, Marinette couldn't help but feel warm and fuzzy inside. She then put on a look of determination and nodded. Fast forward to the plan initiation. Marinette continued to laugh nervously. Her dad chuckled. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. You and your friends going on some adventure in Spain or something. Oh no, we're definitely not going to Spain. That would not be an approved activity. At all. <laughs> so, would you make the pastries for us? I promise we'll pay you back. Marinette, you silly cinnamon roll. You don't have to pay me back. I'm your papa. I'd give you the world if I could. You're such a wonderful daughter that I'd be more than happy to make you and your friends some pastries. The guilt immediately shot through Mari's heart and it took all of her willpower to not fall over. Her mother walked over to flatten Mari's flyaway hairs and adjust her cardigan's collar. All we ask is that you be safe, have fun, and tell us what your friends think of the treats. Can you do that for us, honey? Marinette wanted to cry. She really had the best parents ever. Yes, of course. Thank you, guys. Step two. The next day, bright and early, once the box pastries were secure, the group of friends would meet up at the front of the amusement park and go over their plan of action one more time. All right, so Nino and I will stay here. You two know what to do, right? Alia asked. I'll stay in the city and patrol as Cat Noir. There will be no chance that any of your parents sees Adrian aggressed, Adrian proudly answered. And I'll head to the train station nearby and buy a ticket to Montreux. She groaned. Ugh, almost six hours on a train. She gave a small smile and a thumbs up. It'll be worth it, though. She looked at her phone. Thanks to Luca, I have Julica's exact location, so hopefully she'll be in her dorm and easy to spot. I feel bad that you'll be cramped in such a small space for so long while we get to stroll about, Adrian told her. I feel bad for you that you won't be able to have fun with us here at the park. Alia referred to Adrian. Hey, someone has to keep Paris safe and I'm the only one who can destroy Akamas. He slumped his shoulders. I do agree though, it does suck. I haven't been to this park since I was a kid. And I can't even have one of Mr. Dupont's scrumptious pastries. His mouth started watering as the aroma of the fresh baked goods floated up to his nose. Marinette giggled. <laughs> Your sacrifice is appreciated, Kitty and I promise you'll get to try one some other time. Dude, I'm not even sure why you haven't yet, Nino said. You've been friends with Marinette for a while. Pastries weren't exactly on our minds at the time, Marinette said. You'll get your chance aggressed, Alia said, and we'll have a real day where we can all hang out here. Promise, scout's honor, she saluted him. Are you even a scout? Adrian asked her. Anyway, here's the tricky part. Alia changed the subject and addressed Marinette. You'll have to leave your phone with me just in case your parents call to check in on you. If that happens, I'll transform into Rena Rouge and make an illusion to talk to them. It'll be no big. And if you need to contact anyone, you could become Ladybug and contact me with your yo-yo. So no worries, Adrian told her. Marinette nodded and handed her phone to Alia. So I guess we're really doing this, huh? She asked everyone. Nino gave her a thumbs up as they all smiled at her with determined looks. She reciprocated their expressions in confidence. All right, Adrian, I'll let you know once I've arrived, when I'm about to leave the school, and when I'm back here. Say no more, milady. You've got this. 
And with that, the friends split up and enacted the plan. Step 3. Alia and Nino go hang out at the amusement park. Adrian heads back to town and transforms into Cat Noir. He patrols throughout the city. Marinette purchases her train tickets and takes the long ride to Switzerland. While on the train, aside from the occasional nap, Mari brought some puzzle books to pass the time as well as some fantasy books to read. This whole experience was super nerve-wracking but also super exciting. She hoped everything would go off without a hitch. When she looked outside the window to the quickly passing scenery, she wondered if this was the same scenery that Julika saw when she left Paris. It was entirely possible she left via plane, but it was still interesting to think about. What went on in that girl's head? What was she going to be like? Would she be happy to see her? Would she be angry that they never extended their hand in friendship? Did she blame them for feeling like she had to leave Paris? Mari took a deep breath and calmed her thoughts. No turning back now. Can't worry about the what-ifs. I'm doing this. We are doing this. Come what may. Hold on, Julika. I'll be there soon. While at the amusement park, Alia and Nino had fun on the rides and attractions, but not too much fun. They were on a mission, after all. Still, they appreciated the time to spend together alone. Predictably, Marinette's parents did indeed call at some point, and Alia did what she said she'd do. She found a secure and secret place to transform into Rena Rouge. Nino guarded the place she was hiding. Using Mirage, Alia created an illusion of herself in her civilian form as well as Marinette. Nino answered the phone and made it a video call with her parents. Because the illusions weren't solid, he had to hold the phone up to them. Hi, sweetie. We don't want to be helicopter parents or anything, and we respect your space. We just wanted to make sure that you and your friends were having fun, Sabine said. Aw, thanks, Mama, said the fake Marinette. We're having so much fun, and everyone loved the pastries. Yummy as always, Mr. Dupin. Five stars, fake Alia told him. Why, thank you, Alia. That's always great to hear, Marinette's dad said with much cheer in his tone. Where's Nino? Marinette's mother asked. Right here, Mrs. C. And might I say, you're looking as exquisite as always. Sabine giggled and leaned on her cheek bashfully. Oh, Nino, always such a charmer. What about that Adrian boy? He's there too, right? Tom asked. I want to know what he thought about my pastries. I love hearing the reviews of first-time tasters. Fake Alia and fake Marinette looked at each other nervously. Adrian? Uh, well, about that. He's right here, said a voice approaching them. Rena Rouge figured that there was a chance that Adrian's presence might be requested, so she played her flute and created another illusion. Fake Adrian walked up to the phone and said hi. Sorry about that, I was just using the bathroom. I'm so glad I got the chance to say thank you. You're definitely the best baker in town, Mr. Dupin. Tom let out a boisterous laugh. <laughs> thank you very much, my boy. You certainly have good taste. As always, you're welcome here anytime. All of my daughter's friends are. Well, we don't want to keep you all from your fun. Bye-bye now. The Illusions and Nino all said goodbye. Once the phone hung up, they all let out a deep sigh. The Illusions returned to Rena Rouge, and, exhausted, she released the magic and they disappeared. After detransforming back into Alia, she came out of her hiding spot and sluggishly walked over to her boyfriend. Nice job, Alia. But hey, are you okay? I'm good. Just a bit worn out. I might be able to create any illusion I want, but I'm still technically out of shape magic-wise, so it takes a bit out of me to do more creative and separate illusions. I'll recover in no time, though. She smiled at him. We were both awesome. Let's just hope that everything is going to be just as awesome with Marinette. Meanwhile, Cat Noir was doing his own thing in the city, making sure that no shenanigans were taking place. Step 4. Marinette arrives in Montreux, Switzerland. She was immensely relieved to be off the train. However, there was no time to enjoy her freedom or fully take in the beauty of this new country, with its vast blue skies, majestic mountains, and fresh greenery. It was time to get to work. Once she found a hiding location of her own, she transformed. Tiki, spots on! 
and with a bright flash of pink, she became Ladybug. Using her yo-yo, she called up Cat Noir to confirm that she made it to Switzerland. Just be careful, my lady. You're almost there, he encouraged her. Right, and I hope everything is going well on your end. Things are perfectly fine over here. Hawk Moth has been giving us a bit of a break lately. It's both refreshing and concerning. Ladybug chuckled uneasily. I feel you there, but we'll worry about that later. Keep up the good work and talk to you soon. Copy that. Once the call hung up, she proceeded to use her yo-yo as a GPS. She had already studied the map on her computer the night before, but just wanted to make sure. And with that, she secured the box of pastries onto her back and then she was off, leaping and swinging and using her enhanced agility where she could in order to get to the school Serval Montreux. When the buildings became more scarce, she got creative by hitching rides on trucks and other vehicles without the drivers knowing, by securing a spot on their tops. Step 5. Arrive at the school and sneak past security. Sure enough, just as Lucas said, the school, located next to a large, lovely lake and surrounded by lush greenery, was surrounded by a gate with security points, reminiscent of a gated community. However, she overestimated how big it was. The school itself seemed to be the size of a medium-sized hotel. Even then, it looked like a giant, comfy home, not at all what she had imagined. In her mind, the school would house hundreds if not thousands of students, so it would be easy for Julika to feel overwhelmed and make it hard for her to make friends. But this school probably had no more than 70 students, if that. Still, though, Marinette realized that it's possible to feel lonely and helpless no matter the size of the group around you. It wasn't difficult to get past security. Then again, she was a superhero and didn't exactly have the limitations of regular humans. Once in the school proper, and being absolutely certain that there were no security cameras around her, Ladybug hid herself in some bushes and detransformed back into Marinette. Step 6. Find Julika. Now in her civilian form, Marinette still tried to be stealthy and stay out of sight of any adult she happened to notice. It was Saturday, so theoretically, most of the teachers and staff shouldn't be on duty. Then again, they're taking care of a bunch of teenage girls, so it would be irresponsible to leave them on their own. So, must stay vigilant. With a lot of wall hugging, ducking, sneaking, and sweating, Mari was able to avoid the obstacles. That is, until she tripped on a crack and fell face first onto the floor. She groaned. Um, are you okay? Asked a sweet voice. Marinette looked up and saw a small cute girl with short blonde hair and bright blue eyes wearing so much pink. The girl extended her hand out to Marinette. Mari took the girl's hand and the girl helped her up. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks. I'm sorry, I can be a bit clumsy sometimes. It's fine. I'm just glad you're okay. By the way, I've never seen you before. She blinked at Marinette with her big blue eyes. Mari tensed up. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm new. Maybe. I'm touring the school with my parents. They're in the office right now. I kind of went off on my own. Oh, okay. The girl smiled at her. That was easy, Marinette thought to herself. By the way, do you know a girl named Julika Kufan? She and I used to go to the same school. Is she a friend of yours? Um, hopefully. Oh, well, sorry. I don't know who that is. Do you know her room number? Uh, yeah, here. Marinette showed the girl the text that Luca sent over. Ah, no worries. You're actually super close. Go up this stairway. It should be one of the rooms on that floor. Really? Thank you so much. The girl giggled. <laughs> no problem. I hope you find your friend. And I hope you get to unroll here. It's super wonderful. Um, what's your name, by the way? M my name? It's... It's, uh... Come on, Marinette. Just give her any name. Maybe your mom's name. Or maybe Chloe? Chloe would be kind of funny. 
but without thinking, she answered, My name is Marinette. Darn it, Mari! She yelled at herself. Ooh, what a pretty name. I'm Rose. Nice to meet you, Rose. Um, can you please not tell anyone that I was here? How come? It's just... Uh, it's... It's, it's a secret. S surprise? There was a few moments of silence between them. Oh, okay. Rose replied cheerily. Wow, super easy. This girl really doesn't have a care in the world, does she? Marinette thought to herself. She then told Rose as she slowly tiptoed away from the girl. Well, uh, I gotta go now. Bye. Bye-bye, Marinette. Mari sprinted up the stairs and very soon managed to find Julika's room. She couldn't believe that she finally made it. Feeling a bit nervous, she recalled what Luca said about Julika. How Julika admired her and her friends and how she was always off by herself. Taking a deep breath, Marinette knocked on the door. She waited a few moments. There was no answer. She knocked again. No answer. This time when she knocked, she called out, Um, Julika? Julika Kufan? Are you here? It's Marinette Dupin Ching from Francois Dupont. Are you home? Still no answer. Marinette sighed, feeling defeated. What could she do now? If she couldn't find Julika, it would ruin the whole plan. Not only would they fail the mission, but she might get back to Paris too late and get everyone in trouble. More than that, she wouldn't be able to help Julika. Julika wouldn't get to know that she had friends in Paris cheering for her. But just as she was falling into despair, Marinette heard the door crack and slowly open, but only slightly. M Marinette? Said a gentle and quiet but unfamiliar voice. She didn't reveal herself. Mari perked up. Julika? Is that you? What? What are you... Why are you... Here? I came to see you. You came to see... Me? Why? Well... Marinette tried to find a way to not trace the motivation back to Luca. Didn't want Julika to think she was there because her big brother asked her to be. I was suddenly reminded of you and I wanted to see you. What? Yeah, so, um, can I see you? Are you okay with that? Mari asked. Hmm, how did you... How did you find out where I was? Shoot, Marinette thought. I'll have to bring up Luca anyway or else I'll look like a creep. Alia found your information online, so I followed it here. M my information is online? Anyone can just find me like that? Julika's voice suddenly became very distressed. No, no, wait, wait. I'm sorry, that was a really bad joke. Marinette laughed uncomfortably. I just didn't know how you'd feel if I told you that Luca told me where you were. Luca? Upon opening the door fully, Julika revealed herself. She was a taller girl with long black hair dyed purple on her bangs covering her left eye, as well as purple halfway through her hair falling down her back. Her outfit was more goth-leaning and super fashionable. She had striking red eyes, but had on a concerned and timid expression. You know Luca? Um, yeah. We met the other day. He's super nice. Did... did he put you up to this? What? No way. Do you think he'd actually ask me to come all the way over here? To Switzerland just to see you? Marinette smiled at her. I actually told him that I'd write you a letter. But little did he know that i show up in person. I hope that's all right. Uh, um... Julika began to fidget with her hair and avoided eye contact. So you really came here for me? Marinette nodded. Yup. Are, are your parents here? I mean... You're not here by yourself, are you? Marinette once again chuckled nervously. What? <laughs> no, of course not. 
That would be completely irresponsible. Hey, actually, I came to deliver something to you. I unfortunately can't stay long, but I want you to have this. Marina untied the box from her back and handed it to Julika. What's this? The girl asked. Well, when Luca mentioned how much you liked my papa's pastries, I wanted to bring you a bunch. Just to remind you of home and to tell you that you have people in Paris who care about you. Oh, and sorry if the pastries aren't as neatly packed as they were when they were first put in there. <laughs> Julika opened the box and her eyes widened. She saw the assortments of baked goods. They smelled amazing. But what really caught her eye was the photograph placed on top of them. It was a picture of Marinette, Nino, Alia, and some blonde boy she had never seen before. Adrian, smiling and holding up pieces of paper with giant words written on them. Each person held a different word. Placed together, they wrote out, Your friends from Paris. She stared at the picture. The blonde boy is Adrian Agrest. He is the son of Gabriel Agrest, the famous fashion designer. We befriended him recently. I think you'd like him. Still staring at the picture, Julika asked, You're my friends? Marinette closed her eyes and nodded. Yes! That is, if you want to be friends. Suddenly, Marinette could hear sniffling. She saw Julika's shoulders trembling. Julika? Are you okay? Without warning, Julika dropped the box and pulled Marinette in for a hug as she cried on her shoulder. Her emotions coming in loud and clear, Mari's smile warmed as she reciprocated the hug. She began to stroke Julika's hair. There, there. It's okay. <laughs> yes, Julika hiccuped. Please, yes, please, please be my friend. Of course, Marinette continued to comfort her. It's nice to meet you. I'm Marinette Dupan Cheng. What's your name? I'm, I'm Julika Kufang. Her crying continued. <laughs> Thank you, Marinette. After a while, Julika calmed down and they broke the hug. Julika apologized for dropping the box. Marinette was not offended at all. And fortunately, the pastries were still intact. I do have to go now. I have to make the train before it gets too late. But next time you're in Paris, please call me so that all of us can hang out. Marinette then remembered something. Oh, shoot. I forgot I don't have my phone. Uh, it's okay. Um, I'll... Uh, tell Luca to send you my, um, number, if that's okay, Julika said. That's more than okay, Mari beamed. And enjoy your pastries. I hope they're just as tasty as you remember. Good luck at school, okay? You're a super sweet girl, so I know you'll do just fine. Realizing that she had been there for too long, Marinette became aware of the fact that she had been playing with chance here, since it was only a matter of time before an adult came around. She waved to Julika and said her goodbyes before running off. Step 7. Go back home. Feeling super good about how things went, Marinette found her hiding spot again and transformed into Ladybug. She then made the trek back to the train station, making sure to not be spotted. On the way, she called Cat Noir to tell him that the mission was a success. Way to go, Ladybug, he praised her. But technically, the mission will only be a success once you're back in Paris. So, you know, try not to get abducted by aliens. I know how much they like going after cute girls like you. Ladybug blushed and chuckled uneasily. Interesting flirting tactic, mixing a compliment with a horror story. Wouldn't it be a sci-fi story? Does the genre really matter? Depends. Can I still come and save you as your knight in shining armor? Genuinely amused, Ladybug giggled. <laughs> Nice try, Kitty, but you'll be plenty noble just by being there for me on time at the train station. Can do, milady. Ladybug smiled as she continued on her path. It should be smooth sailings from here. They hung up and Ladybug made it back to the station, detransformed without anyone noticing, and got back onto the train. During the ride, she couldn't help but think of the day's experiences. Psst. Marinette, Tiki whispered from her bag. Tiki, shh! You have to be quiet so that people don't see you. I'll be careful, but I really want to say something to you. 
Looking around to make sure no one noticed, Marinette placed both of her hands into her bag and cupped Tiki into her closed palms. She discreetly brought her cupped hands up to her ear, leaning over slightly to make it less conspicuous. Tiki whispered, You don't have to respond, just listen. I know you were worried about whether or not you were a good hero, but you went out of your way to make that sweet girl smile. Today, you were her hero, and I couldn't be prouder of you. I think you're doing beautifully. You are a fantastic ladybug. Tiki then discreetly peeked her head out and gave Mari a quick kiss on the cheek. Mari blushed a little from the gesture and kind words. Aw, Tiki. Thank you. She placed the Kwame back into her bag and snuck the little creature a sweet snack. While Tiki happily ate, Mari sat in blissful silence with the biggest content smile on her face. Step 8. Meet back up to finish the mission. There wasn't much more to the plan. Marinette successfully made it back to Paris. It was already nighttime. Just as she was about to transform to call Cat Noir, Adrian was already there waiting for her. It was a relief to see him. Without skipping a beat, they gave each other a jubilant high five. The two of them met up with Alia and Nino outside of the amusement park. Upon seeing Marinette's face, along with her giving them a thumbs up, Alia and Nino grinned victoriously. The group of friends put their fists together for a pound it. The day ended and they all felt so accomplished. Equally exhausted, but fully triumphant. That same evening, Julika texted her brother while he was practicing playing his guitar to tell him about Marinette's visit. Wait, she actually went all the way there just to visit Julika? Luca smiled to himself. That Marinette really is something, isn't she? Julika sent over an image of the picture of Mari with her friends. They look like a pretty cool bunch, Luca thought. His eyes couldn't help but be drawn towards Marinette. Upon Julika's request, Luca texted over her number to Marinette, along with a very sincere thank you. The next text came in, and it was from Julika. She said that she shared the pastries with her roommates, who, in turn, invited the other girls on her floor to try some. She sent over a picture of the other girls partaking in the baked goods. Luca continued to smile. He texted her, Great job, sis. You're so strong. Love you and added a heart emoji at the end. Just before continuing his guitar practice, something told him to look back at the picture of Julika in her class from last year. Seeing how lonely she looked then, he felt so much better about her future. Marinette gave her the push she needed to crack open that shell little by little. That gift was much more valuable than any pastry, that's for sure. His eyes once again wandered over to Marinette. She really was a super special girl, but then, Something else caught his eye. Something he didn't notice before. Or rather, someone. It was Chloe. Chloe was in Marinette and Julika's class. He had never noticed before since he had no idea who she was when Julika first sent him the picture. But without a doubt, that was definitely Chloe. She had on an entitled expression which made Luca chuckle. That girl deeply entertained and fascinated him. She was so starkly different from Marinette, pretty much her polar opposite. But wait, if she was in Julika's class, and Julika was so aware of the things and people around her, he couldn't help but wonder. Picking up his phone again, Luca texted his sister. Hey Jules, this is a bit random, but I see that a girl named Chloe Bourgeois was in your class last year. Can you tell me about her? But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.